Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today what I want to go ahead and cover is kind of how I'm going to be leveling my new low life righteous fire character um, since I did unfortunately just rip literally like the other day. So I went ahead and compiled pretty much all of the leveling gear that I'm going to be using on my character. Um, I spent a little bit of time on this because normally I play very YOLO and I feel like that's really difficult to try to explain to players. So I try to be a little bit more organized for you guys this time. Now this is a pretty much like everything here is pretty cheap with the exception of one item that you do not have to use. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and cover everything and explain why we're going to use it. Now we're going to go ahead and level as low life. Well, not low life, sorry. We're leveling as Righteous Fire Totems rather than playing a summoner this time around. The reason why I played a summoner the first time is because I personally just wanted to see how the new zombies worked and the tree layout kind of worked for it. So anyway, let's start with the basics here. Um, since we're playing a totem build, I want to go ahead and kind of cover the skill tree before I jump on into the items because it'll kind of make sense doing it like this. Uh, excuse me, uh, don't save please. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make a new character. Now you don't have to worry about the build, pretty much everything is going to be the same. Um, I'm just going to show you guys the leveling tree for right now. So any future questions for the build, just go ahead and watch the guides and whatnot, or you can answer in the comments below, or drop one. So let's go with the Templar here. So I'm going to go ahead and start this by, actually let me put on this one thing so you guys can see the nodes. I really hate this button, but okay. All right, so I'm gonna start off with elemental damage because Righteous Fire is an element and it does scale off elemental damage. I'm also gonna go ahead and grab the life here. Now you can choose to transition into the um, energy shield, or oh, sorry, life regen nodes. You can get the armor ES nodes, which really don't benefit you at all at the beginning, but I'm instead gonna go out for the strength and I'll explain why here in a minute. So we're gonna grab the Discipline and Training. You could ultimately grab Elementalist. I'm just gonna leave it alone like this for now. I'm gonna move down here, right? Pick up a Jewel, and we're gonna go ahead and grab the Totem Life and not actually the Cast Speed. Now you can grab this one because it is a Totem Damage, but the reason why we're grabbing Life is when you're playing Righteous Fire Totems, it is going to scale off of your Totem rather than yourself. Since we're also leveling as a Life character, we're gonna go ahead and grab Constitution. Now. Right in this spot, there is a jewel that you can put, and it's called Spire of Stone. You can find it for about two chaos on poe.trade. Uh, I'll pull up the macro right now to show you guys. You can see it's, it's going for about 2C. So what this jewel does is you can see it gives increased totem life per 10 strength allocated, and your totems cannot be stunned. The stun part doesn't really matter too much, but the totem life does end up being pretty nice. So if you look at this, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 strength uh, in this one area, which ends up becoming a pretty nice chunk to the totem life. So it's a really efficient jewel for just two chaos. So that's why I personally recommend that. Now we're gonna move across. You can grab combat stamina early on. It doesn't really matter too much. Just take that as the, you know as you go. Uh, with my new variation, I may grab Indomitable. I haven't really decided yet. Now, I did change my skill tree layout. I haven't actually posted the new one yet. So this is going to be uh, how my new tree is rather than connecting here. I am going to be connecting this way instead. So I'll grab Devotion. You can also grab Arsonist. It's 40% fire damage for four points with a life regen node. Another very efficient wheel uh, that we do grab on our character now as well. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab Dual Totem first, though, because it is very important. Uh, again, I decided to go with the um, Elemental Resistance and Totem Life route. Now, the cool thing about this is you can grab Elemental Resistance with Face and Steel. You can come over here to Elementalist to grab Elemental Resistance as well. And you have another Jewel open here for any Jewel slash Elemental Resistance you would like. We can come up here and grab our Purity of Flesh and start to move alongside like this. Now the reason why I decided to take this pathing is, well, I mean, this is the pathing we normally take, and this tree still allows us to pretty much very efficiently not have to respec and do anything retarded. We're also going to grab Holy Fire, definitely obviously grab Holy Fire before these three points, um, and then I would say when you get to this point, uh, this is like the juicy section, because you're going to grab Quick Recovery, which we'll respec later, um, but we're going to grab Quick Recovery for now for the maximum life and life regeneration. When in the new tree, I ended up dropping Quick Recovery and picking up uh, I picked up Arsonist for one additional point because it's just much better. I'm used to picking this up because of energy from within, but energy from within isn't as good as it used to be. Um, well, I guess it technically is as good. It's just ri ridiculously expensive. 
So in this section here, we're gonna go ahead and grab Mind Over Matter for some really good effective life. And also I'm gonna try a Mana Variant with the character now. You can also grab Shamnistic Fury, which will give you insane damage. Honestly, you probably don't need any more damage up to like level 75 at this point with the character. So we're gonna grab the Jewel. And then from this point onward, I would say I'm gonna go ahead and move down and grab Arsonist. And you're pretty much just going to the shadow now. So again, if I do miss some points here or there, you guys can fill them in. Um, like I said, I am making this build as I go. So let's grab through here. This is gonna be the most inefficient pathing point for leveling. And when you get to this point, you can grab melding. You can also go ahead and grab heart and soul, grab your area nodes. And by this point in time, uh, you're probably what? Somewhere in your 60s, mid 60s or so. So you pretty much wanna stretch your tree out and get ready to go. Uh, not ready to go low life yet because I don't know exactly when I'm doing it. I'll probably be transitioning around 75 to 80 um, and I'll have another video guide when I actually transition. So in terms of for this character at this point, um, you really have to make the decision of whether you want whether or not you want to get your aura effect right now. I don't really think it's going to matter that much when you're leveling because you literally just need to run like purity of fire and maybe purity of elements and that's it. You don't need to run anything else. You can run discipline. Um, you can run vitality, but your totems really have very few ways of scaling, which makes it pretty good because you're not really forced to pick up much notes. So this is kind of the tree layout I'm going to go ahead and use for now. It's pretty fair. It gives 115 max life with mind over matter with 4.6% life regen. So this is already good to go. It's a solid character, can farm dried lake, no problem at all. And I'll have this posted in the link down below. So anyway, let's move on into the rest of the uniques we're gonna be using. So for leveling, I decided I wanted to use uh, two Life Sprigs and or a Fen Coil. I don't really think it matters. Uh, either way, these items are worth absolutely nothing. You can see I can pull them up for you here. Uh, Fen Coil is going for less than a Chaos, it's their Alks. And same thing with Life Sprigs are worth about um, one to two Chaos. Um, like I said, doesn't really matter between your options here. The reason why I picked up a Fen Coil is it is 50% increased damage, which works for your totems. I haven't decided exactly what level I'm going to go totems, probably like maybe in the 20s or 30s. So when I actually am ready to convert to totems, I picked up myself two Dark Seers that are worth a total of about 1 to 2 Chaos each. And these items are really insane because they give about... I don't know, 70% increased damage per. So you can see this is 48 plus 22, so four, five, six, seven. That's 70% increased damage for one chaos, which remember, you need increased damage, area damage, fire damage, damage over time um, to actually scale your totems or totem damage. You cannot just use like spell damage for righteous fire totems. So these are very, very good. If you want to use Duresso's Passions, you can as well. Problem with Duresso's Passion is it requires like 140 decks. In terms of my boots, I'm either going to use Wanderlust or my 7 League Step. Now, Wanderlust are obviously the budget version. They cost literally nothing. They're 1 Chaos. Uh, 7 League Step are 50 Chaos, but they give you movement speed. Again, you don't have to use them. This is just probably what I'm going to use. Uh, I've got these shitty Caress Gauntlets that I'm going to be probably use just at the beginning until I go Double Totem, and then I'll just use regular gloves with resistance. I couldn't really find much gloves to use. In terms of my belt, I looked at Belt of the Deceiver, gives strength, which is pretty good, gives life, uh, reduced damage from critical strikes, which is what I died from, Kappa. Uh, all resist and nearby enemies are intimidated. Uh, intimidation means that enemies take 10% more damage from all sources. It's 10% increase, but it's essentially a multiplier because you're not really doing anything else to increase the damage on the targets. Um, obviously, we can use a gold rim. If you don't want to use a gold rim, there is a budget helm you can use called an honor helm, or you can use a three dragons. Those are also other options. I'm going to pick up a Tabula Rasa because there are only 10 Chaos in the League, which really isn't that much at all for a leveling set, something that's going to carry you all the way up until you're ready to go low life. In terms of the links I'm going to use inside my Tabula, we've got Righteous Fire, Increased Burn Damage, Ink AoE, Rapid Decay, Elemental Focus, Spell Totem. If you're not playing on a Spell Totem, you remove Spell Totem, you remove Rapid Decay, and here's your 4 link. So this is the 6 link we're going to run with. I also decided to pick up a Troll Timber Shield in case I want to use a shield for extra life. Now Troll Timber costs about 1 Chaos and also gives life regeneration, sorry it's 2 Chaos, and gives 15% increased AoE, which is not nearly as strong as it used to be. So to cover some of the last uniques I'm picking up, I decided to go with 2 Moku's Embraces that require level 16 and give 25% fire damage on top of giving solid resistance, right? 40 Cold Res plus the Implicit for Fire Res makes them pretty okay rings. 
There are other rings you can use as well called Le Hoop, which roll basically 30 all attributes, 30 increased damage, 30 all resist. The problem is they're like anywhere from 5 to 30 chaos, so I decided to go with Mokus because they're much cheaper. And the last piece of gear I'm going to go with is called a Nigamus Tiki, which is running for about 4 to 10 chaos. I bought the one that was 4 on here. And this rolls, if you look at the fire damage, up to 70% fire damage with a little bit of life and a resistance. So I'm pretty sure our damage is going to be more than enough on the tree, uh, plus combined with the items, to essentially just fly through the content. Now, in terms of my Asenichi choices, what I'm going to go ahead and go with, I can't actually bring it up for you and show you, so I'm going to go ahead and pop onto the character in Standard League. Uh, where is it? Where is Mr. Standard League Feels Guardian Man? Alright. I'm probably going to pick up Time of Need, and then go Radiant Faith, and then go Unwavering Faith, and then get Prayer of Glory last. The reason why I picked up Prayer of Glory first on the previous character that was leveling was because we were playing a summoner, and minions scale with attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed depending on what they are, so this actually worked out very well. Also, because of the boots I'm using, this movement speed is not going to be nearly as impactful as it is later, uh, and this will allow me to essentially go... Low Life Righteous Fire almost right away once I hit about 70-75 because I don't need um, Time of Need for my Uber Lab. I would need Prayer of Glory. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be about it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I will be streaming my character leveling tonight on the stream, so probably a couple minutes after you see this video uh, gone, you should probably see my stream live with a level 1 character. You can actually see the character I was just on, which is level 1. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much going to be about it. I did want to try to make a trickster variant, but I was kind of just like, ah, I want to see how this Mono Guardian thing works now too. So anyway, I'm going to catch you guys later, like I said earlier. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.